starting we're live on the air hey how's it going everybody hi there it's bruce here with traveling with bruce welcome to my live stream today january the uh, what's the date folks january the uh, 20 it's the 20th my god january the 20th two-thirds of the month saturday two o'clock eastern time welcome everyone uh uh we've had a lot of fun this past week on my uh, live chats um today is uh Today is Trump shutdown day. How about that? Uh, <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, thank you for uh, for coming out. Um, uh, I thought I thought about this uh, shutdown thing. I was watching all the action last night on TV. Uh, I guess you know. I guess my idea of a good time now at this age is to watch CNN and MSNBC uh, right through midnight Eastern to see if the uh, Senate's going to approve the. Uh, <laughs> legislation to keep the country going or not that, that I, that's my that's my excitement uh so of course they didn't vote on it or they, they didn't vote for it so we have a shutdown and um now the question is what's this going to mean for uh for passengers so we're going to talk about that today uh if you're watching me uh as a regular uh, you know what to do just uh, type in and say hi and uh tell me where you're watching me from if you're new and you've never watched me before uh, I'm Bruce. Uh, this is Traveling with Bruce. I'm located in British Columbia, Canada, uh, in uh, Creston. I'm about three miles north of the Idaho border, so I can see the United States just out my living room window. Uh, unlike Sarah Palin, I, I can see your country right out of my window. It's you just over here. And uh, today is uh, apparently going to be sunny. Uh, it's been cloudy all morning, and I see this big blue, pe blue patch of sky moving over. And halfway through this broadcast you might see this side of my face get really shiny as the sun starts to beam in uh, and warm up the place a little bit um we're about uh oh about 40 what are we at about 35 36 degrees right now outside so we're just slightly melting what snow we've got and uh, uh nothing new coming thankfully so we're looking all right i think a couple of folks are joining already gailey is here Hey, Gailey from the United Kingdom, just outside, uh, not too far from Liverpool, if I remember. She's here. Welcome back. Uh, Thomas, uh, Arnold, Thomas is here from Big Bear in California. How you doing, Thomas? 32 and snowing in Big Bear, and you need it. And uh, that's great. Uh, hopefully, you'll get a bunch of it, and uh, your skiers will rejoice. Again, everybody, thanks for joining today. I see more viewers kicking in. Um, today is uh, a topic is going to be uh, in general a number of topics about cruising and traveling, but we're going to talk about uh, the Trump shutdown and what is this going to mean for uh, for the travel business as a whole and uh, obviously for cruisers. Uh, if you've never been on a cruise before, uh, this channel's for you. Um, if you've been on a cruise before but it's been a while, uh, you can get caught up with what's been going on and what's happening in the cruise game. Um, I actually asked my audience uh, a, a lot of questions. What, what do they think? Uh, you know, what's your favorite cruise ship you've ever been on? Uh, what's the favorite port you've ever visited? Uh, uh, what's the worst ship you've ever been on? <laughs> what's your favorite cruise line? What cruise line do you hate? Um, you know, food on a cruise. Uh, who's got the best food? Who's got the worst food? Uh, uh, should you go to specialty restaurants or should you uh, brave the buffet and, and uh, you know, go to the... Uh, the pizza parlor on the uh, pool deck. Uh, we kind of cover it all. Any of you have any particular questions, especially you newbies, anything you need to know, just fire away and uh, we'll do what we can to answer it for you and let you know what's going on. Uh, yesterday, I have to say, I'm sorry for, for the poor quality of my uh, telecast yesterday regarding the technical. Uh, uh, first five, 10 minutes, the, everything was great. Uh, Picture was fantastic, and then uh, the we 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 got really fuzzy and and a real poor connection, and uh, apparently I watched my uh, I always watch my tel my my live streams later anyway to see what it, you know how it came out, and uh, gosh the last forty odd minutes uh, I'm all blurry and I'm all fuzzy and my voice is breaking up and uh, I was that was disappointing, and uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, it, it's just you know it's the way it is. Um, yeah, so it was uh, it was not a not a fun deal, but hopefully today we'll be fine. Hopefully the uh, technicals will uh, treat us well. We've been very lucky so far. Uh, this is now my second full week of doing these lives, and uh, uh, hopefully this live stream will just uh, come through like before, and they'll uh, they'll come through nice and clean. I did end the uh, uh, the um, show yesterday evening with um, uh, some questions that cruisers have been asking uh, over the years of cruise staff. Um, you know, what I love about being on a cruise is uh, once in a while I'll, I'll attend one of those uh, 
uh, deals where the captain comes for a chat. He'll he'll sort of do a Q and A and and answer any questions you might have, and uh, he'll address all the cruisers. He'll come maybe to the main ballroom or or, or to one of the uh, showrooms. And uh, I love hearing the questions that you know that they get asked over the years. And last night I was trying to read some of these off to you, and I watched my <laughs> watched me reading them last night. And it's like every third word got just deleted. It's like I was on a bad connection. And so I thought this morning I'd read a couple of these. Uh, well, basically, they're some of the most infamous questions ever asked by cruisers of the uh, of cruise staff on on cruise ships. And uh, you know, here's one here: is the you know, has the ship ever has this ship ever sunk? You know, good good question to ask because you know, are you on a refurbished cruise ship? You know, did it sink last month? Uh, you know, what's the deal on this thing? Um, if I get an outside cabin and it rains. Will I get wet? Well, you know, you want to know this sort of information. It's this is important for for someone who's never been on a cruise ship before. What happens if I flush the toilet while I'm sitting on it? Now that there's, you know, we all have deep thoughts on the toilets, don't we? Um, do you have a cruise to Las Vegas? I'd love to take that cruise. Um, how small does your face have to be to get the mini facial special in the spa? You know, it's all in how you read it, you know. Uh, very, very interesting. What elevation are we at? That's a trick question. Um, what do you do with the ice sculptures after they melt? <laughs> I, I kind of like that one. Uh, and then the, the, um, the, in the photo gallery, you know, when it, when you, you walk through the photo gallery on a cruise ship, uh, those of us who cruise, but if you haven't, they get an onboard photographer, uh, an entire department there. They'll take photos of you on, on special order or they're just there. They're everywhere. And you'll always kind of walk by a photo session. And uh, sometimes your photo gets taken. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you, you don't have to have your photo taken if you don't want to. But then they, they display the photos on these huge racks, uh, just rack after rack after rack. There's all these photographs up there. If you've had your photo taken, you, you, you know, you try and find it. And the, uh, the question that people ask is, how do I know which ones are mine? Um, yeah, which, which photo of me do I know is a photo of me that you took? If I go look at the photos you took of the photos of me, which ones are mine? Um, does the crew sleep on board the ship? No. Uh, in the afternoon, uh, early evening, we have tenders that come by and pick the crew up and we take them ashore. And we uh, put them up in hotels. Next morning, first thing, we pick them back up, bring them up to the cruise ship. And he, you know, he, that's not what happened. Uh, wh why are the ruins in such bad shape? <laughs> like that. Uh, and you know that uh, safe, that little vault that we have in our rooms uh, where we keep our valuables? Uh, somebody asked, why is the microwave in my cabin not working? <laughs> Hit the buttons and put the sandwich in there. It didn't warm up. Um, how do we have power this far from land? And uh, the last one I'll mention is um, what time is the midnight buffet? There we go. So what can I say? Hey, Dylan's here. Hello, everyone. Nice. It's a cloudy day. 58 degrees here in Henderson, Nevada. Uh, Paula's here uh, from uh, Hanover, PA, and it's uh, 40 degrees in Hanover. Uh, Dylan, I think you got us right now. Uh, you're the number one guy in temperature. Uh, what can I tell you? Uh, unless someone from Florida contacts us, you, you might hang on to that. We'll see how this winter's day goes. If you're just joining the channel, uh, first time here, or, or uh, uh, you're just kind of checking us out, uh, type in uh, where you're from. Uh, where are you watching me from? What's your high temperature going to be today? Um, and uh, welcome to the, uh, to the uh, live stream, Traveling with Bruce. A um, couple of things I'll mention about my channel for those of you who um, are going to watch this broadcast later. I hate to bore my normal, my regulars who are watching me normally, but uh, for those of you who are watching this this broadcast tonight, tomorrow, and have never seen me on the on air before, um, this channel started August in 2017, uh, August the 12th. Uh, we're right now uh, approaching five and a half months of uh, of life. Um, and uh, it took until December 13th for me to hit my 100th subscriber, uh, slow and steady as she goes, uh, all organic growth, and um, uh, that was a big deal, 100 subscribers. Um, in the last week, I've added 100 subscribers. Uh, we're now sitting at about 335 or so, and uh, I am so grateful for all the new subscribers that have joined in since December 13th. Um, you know, we've got 235 subscribers since then. Fan. Fantastic. 
and um, they're coming from all over. Uh, I've noticed today my viewership from the United Kingdom is up. There's Gailey, you're talking to somebody over there. I, I know it. You're, you're spreading the word because it's having an effect. Uh, my view numbers are rising in the UK. Uh, my number one market, of course, is the United States. Number two is Canada. Uh, but the, the UK is coming up. Uh, fantastic. And, of course, I, I have viewers uh, from about 120 countries uh, overall that have seen at least one of my videos. Uh, you know, some only watch. Uh, I only see maybe four or five uh, views in a week from France or, or other countries. And then... For a week or so, France will pop up to 20 and then, you know, come around. So you never know where the viewers are coming from. Um, but it's uh, it's just fantastic to know that, uh, that you know, the, what we talk about just, just is spread all over the place. Wonderful. There are cruisers everywhere. We love cruising. Um, the channel uh, um, uh, is uh, about 120 videos uh, large now. I have a number of playlists that I put out. A lot about cruising, of course, uh, but also on some of the trips I've taken. And then I have a I have a playlist called uh, So I Know You Like a Good Story, and in there I have some tall tales of uh, people I've met, things that have happened to me, and uh, some people say to me that that those are true stories. There's no way that's true. The the one about me having a steam bath with Tom Jones in Las Vegas, people don't believe that's a true story, but it is. I had I had a I had a steam bath back in the '80s with Tom Jones, and uh, my mother was quite curious about. What well, that was like. Um, uh, my dad uh, and the Beatles. There's a, there's a story about the Beatles and my father, how uh, they helped him make a million bucks in 1963. Great little story. Uh, that, that came out of obviously nowhere. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and other tales. Anyway, um, uh, if you're just joining this channel, thanks for coming aboard. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following me. Uh, I'm running as hard as I can to get this channel up to 1,000 subscribers by February the 20th, uh, that's about, uh, two, about four weeks from now. Uh, that is the new deadline day that YouTube imposed this week uh, about um, the new requirements for monetization. Uh, again, to explain myself, I do this work full-time. This channel is my full-time job. Um, I talk about cruising and research cruising uh, information uh, all the time. And then I work on my channel all the time, editing and uh, trying to promote it on social media. And uh, hosting these uh, live chats, of course, doing regular videos. And uh, I'm trying to grow this channel as quick as I can so I can make a living off of it. I'm not making a living off of it right now. It's costing me. <laughs> so it's more for fun. <laughs> but uh, the channel is growing so quickly that the numbers are transforming. And uh, uh, I need to get 1,000 subscribers to remain inside the YouTube monetization platform that they have. They've just changed the whole rec criteria. I got into the monetization program back in October when I hit 10,000 views. That was what that was. That's what you need to do at that time. Uh, but now they've said, forget the views. We're not interested in the views. We're interested in watch time. We want to know people are watching you by like in minutes, not for 15 seconds and that's, you know, that's good enough and then they go away. So computer bots are out. They want real people watching. Uh, you have to have 4,000 hours in one calendar year to qualify uh, for one of the two criteria. And uh, I'm about 85% uh, of the way there. I'll have that number breached in about uh, seven or eight days. So I'll let you know about that. That's coming right up. Um, the second one, though, is the big one, subscriber count. Now they want to know, they want to see that you have 1,000 subscribers uh, as well as the 4,000 minutes. You have to have both. You can't have just one. I will have the minutes. I'll have the hours watched for sure because uh, the channel is now uh, running at about, um, I'm going to be running at about 3,000 hours a month, uh, the way the channel is going. So 4,000 hours a year is not a problem. It's the uh, subscribers. And, and what I'm amazed at is uh, with only 335 subscribers, uh, I'm running 3,000 hours of watch time. And that, that is a uh, very good ratio for such a small micro channel that I have. And the live streams, of course, help. And uh, the topic is obviously catching on with viewers. And uh, I like the engagement. And this is what YouTube wants. YouTube wants creators to interact with uh, their audience. And I enjoy it very much and uh, want to keep that going. So I've been thanking my subscribers and my viewers out there who have been telling their friends, hey, if you're watching Bruce and you're not a subscriber, give him a break. Become a subscriber. It doesn't cost you anything. And help him march up to 1000 sooner rather than later because the way it was going uh by feb 20 i thought i was going to reach about 550 600 or so subscribers anyway 
just as the curve has been going. And I figured that by the end of March, I'd be at a thousand subscribers. I just have to now shift that forward by five weeks. If I don't make it, um, the the uh, bad news is I become demonetized until I get re-monetized when I do hit the thousand. Um, but the the issue is um, uh, YouTube is now going to be much more uh, um, probably thorough with all the applications for monetization. And I'm gonna have to wait in line to get reviewed. And it, it might take another month after I reach the thousand subscribers to get re-monetized again, which means I might not be re-monetized till May or June. I fear that long, it, it might be a two month delay. And uh, I'd rather reach this goal now by Feb 20 and then move on, you know, just keep on going. So with your help, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm encouraged in the last week, a hundred subscribers, uh, it took me, uh, Four months the first time to get 100 now it took me a week uh, unbelievable and i thank you so much and uh, for those of you coming on board welcome and, and thank you anyone who's uh, just joining the channel let me know where you're from where are you uh, located uh, and how warm are you today oh, we got uh hey oh deanne is here uh and angel's here deanne from pasadena on a beautiful place pasadena is i love pasadena california 60 degrees in pasadena angela is 68 degrees and uh, um, very good, Angela saying, Bruce, you're clear today, not blurry like yesterday. Thank goodness for that, thank you. Uh, Irene is here, first time to join. Hi, Irene, welcome to the channel, welcome to the chat. Uh, welcome to the gang here. Tell us, where are you located? What's your high temperature gonna be? We're trying to find out who's got the hotspot. Uh, Pasadena right now is, is kicking everyone's butt. I'm just looking here, Chevy and First is here. Hey, Bruce, Georgia, nice 63 degrees today. <laughs> That's fantastic because in Georgia a few days ago, I think you were down to the 40s and uh, it wasn't pretty. So you've come around a long way. What <laughs> wonderful welcome. Nice to see uh, you know old man winter kind of leave you alone for a while. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, Jordan live via South Carolina, first time in love. Thanks, Pamela, for for joining me today and joining the rest of us. Uh, it's great to have you. Uh, we're having some fun here and we're comparing high temperatures. My high today in, in Creston, BC was going to be maybe 38 degrees ish. Uh, uh, though I think the sun's just about to break through. You can see the shine here. The shinier this gets, the sunnier it's going to be. Even though I have a curtain here, I welcome the light, but you know I can't make the sun give me. You know I don't want to look right at the sun because then I can't see you guys. I'll be blinded. Oh man, Galia says I certainly interact with this computer when you're on. I laugh and wave when you go. If anyone sees me. <laughs> Um, hi, Irene. Uh, it's fantastic. I have people who are talking to each other on my chat uh, feature here. For those people who are watching this channel, this this telecast tonight, tomorrow, next week, a year from now, uh, the reason I'm talking and reading what's I, what I'm seeing here is my people who are watching live are able to type in and say hi to me and, and we can converse. Um, I'm repeating what they're saying so you know what the heck's going on because I love to interact with my viewers and uh, uh, we uh, compare notes regarding cruising and, and uh, all kinds of other things. Uh, Irene says, I live in Clearville, uh, Pennsylvania. It's now 54. Uh, Clearville, uh, PA. Uh, tell me, Irene, are you closer to Philly or are you closer to uh, Pittsburgh? I'm not, I'm not exactly sure where Clearville is. Um, be kind of curious to know. My wife, by the way, is a massive Steelers fan. If you're an Eagles fan, I'm sorry, but she's a massive Steelers fan. She's still in mourning. Uh, and it's been a rough, uh, long week. Uh, so uh, what can I say? Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, it's great that you guys are here and, uh, um, and more are following. I know people come and watch this telecast. Uh, all week I've noticed the analytics, and people do come in and watch, but they don't tell, tell us that they're here. They want to be anonymous, and they just want to kind of watch, what's this guy doing talking to this lens all the time? And, and he's having a conversation with people that aren't there. What, 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 what's that? Is he crazy? What's going on? So uh, I get it. Uh, I've done it. I go to other people's lives. Sometimes I just kind of watch and want to see what they're doing and what, what's going on. I generally don't interact, but other times I do. So uh, if you do interact, great. If you don't, it's cool. No problem. Uh, Irene uh, uh, saying now it's 54 in Clearville. Okay. A um, couple of things I wanted to uh, bring up today. Uh, yeah, the Trump, the Trump shutdown. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Uh, you know, my, my viewing habits have changed on television in the last, um, well, it's about a year today. Uh, <laughs> maybe a little more than a year ago today, but uh, <clears throat> clearly in the last year, my viewing habits have, have changed a lot on, on television, on live television. Uh, I seem to watch um, 
uh, fake news channels all the time, it seems. Uh, I just, you know, what can I tell you? Of course, I'm on YouTube the rest of the time, and um, I watch some of my favorite shows on, on Netflix. But uh, it, it, news television is so entertaining uh, these days. I can't watch, can't stop watching it. It's just, it's just incredible. And so yesterday, I'm watching the, the shutdown and, uh, um, you know, hearing all the rhetoric that's going on and all the politics and whatnot, which this channel is not. And I went to bed last night and uh, very nice and tired after a long day of doing my YouTube work. And uh, I, I think it was about an hour. I was uh, an hour lying in bed. I, my eyes opened up and I went, oh, my God, I know what to talk about tomorrow. <laughs> the, the shutdown. I got to talk about the Trump shutdown uh, because uh, traveling. Uh, what is going to happen with the travelers regarding the shutdown? And uh, despite all the assurances about uh, certain, you know, essential government services, things screw up. And uh, when you're going on a cruise, um, timing is everything. Uh, being able to, to get a plane ride when you're supposed to get a plane ride, get a connection when you're supposed to get a connection, arrive at a destination airport, get a cab or a bus, get to the ship on time. I mean, there are logistics here. And then the reverse. What about at the end of the cruise? You're supposed to get off the ship at 10. Your flight leaves at 1. Uh, you know, you've got a connection halfway home until you get home. This is for obviously for travelers who don't have the luxury of driving to the ship, like my friends in Florida that, that watch. Um, and, and we have to fly back. And here's where we have problems. Because if it's going to take an extra hour or two to get off the ship because U.S. Customs is backed up at the port, which didn't hit me until this morning. I went, oh my God, I remember that. I remember getting off the ship in uh, in uh, Miami, uh, in uh, Los Angeles, and uh, we would wait an hour to get all the way up to the to the customs uh, officials. There were like four or five agents handling twenty five hundred passengers. Um, what if what if there's only two of them? Um, you know, they need more at the airport or they're, you know, there's one guy called in sick. I mean, what, what happens with the overtime? What happens with this? I know the essential level of service is there, but what happens in these other cases? And, oh, I thought, Jesus, this could be bad. If you don't get out of that terminal, if you get out of the terminal another hour and a half later than you thought, you get to the airport too late. Even though the flight's an hour from now, they won't let you check in because you missed it, you know, two hours before flight time. And then you got to clear security in the airport and that's, that's backed up. Now what? Uh, so, oh my goodness, I thought about all this stuff. Um, Irene is saying, uh, no, hang on. Irene is saying, I live in Bedford County, out uh, our farm borders with uh, Mixon, Dason, Mixon, Mason Dixon line. I can't, <laughs> I'm trying to say that. She borders with the Mason Dixon line. So you're in Southern, I believe you're Southern PA. Um, Susan, uh, Susan is here. Uh, and you've just, oh, and you've just lost a subscriber. So sad for you. Oh, uh, I lost this. It's the way it goes. They come and they go, Susan. Uh, Pamela Jordan, we really enjoy watching your videos. Thank you so much. Um, one thing about my videos, just quickly, about my subscribers, I got to say. I noticed uh, about, oh, in the last eight hours, I lost six subscribers. And I know what's going on. Um, in the last three days, I had a hundred and something join in. And in the last seven or eight hours, about six go and about, five or six come in, there's a bit of a flux. Uh, a number of YouTubers out there are trying to um, initiate what's called sub for sub subscribing, where they basically say, hey, uh, hey buddy, psst, 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 psst. I'll subscribe to your channel if you subscribe to my channel. I'll never watch you and you don't ever have to watch me, but we'll subscribe to each other and we'll be pals, okay? We'll help each other out. YouTube frowns on that. If uh, YouTube can tell, if, if I subscribe to 15 channels today and I never watch a video because, you know, I'm just helping a guy out, they know in the analytics that I didn't do it. They know that the channels I've subscribed to have a pattern or a habit of gaining, say, uh, 30 subscribers in a day and only two people of the subscribers ever watch videos going forward. That's sub for sub. They ban you. They cut you off. And you're out of, you're out of YouTube because that's exactly what YouTube doesn't want. YouTube wants bona fide, legitimate YouTube channels. And, and that's what I believe I am. So I've had a number of sub uh, uh, YouTubers join me uninvited. Uh, I've had a couple of messages saying, hey, I just subbed. Hey, let me know. I just subbed to you. You know, hit me back. I, I don't do that. I don't, I don't sub for sub. I'd rather uh, not hit 1,000 subscribers and, and hit them later and do it all naturally with real viewers than to be artificial about it. Because 
right now. You, if you think YouTube it was watching before uh, about sub for sub, they're really watching it now. And uh, the next 30 days, the, the, the artificial intelligence systems in the computers are all set up waiting for YouTubers to abuse the system. They'll be the first guys kicked out, and I'm just not going to be part of it. So anyway, so from time to time, a sub comes and goes. It, it doesn't matter. The big picture is there. The growth curve is like this. It's accelerating. And uh, I just keep making content, and that's that's what it's all about. Uh, let's see what's going on. Uh, Charles, hi, Bruce, watching from uh, Iva, South Carolina where it's sunny and 60 degrees. Charles, welcome. I think you joined today. I think you're a new subscriber. Welcome. Uh, fantastic, 60 degrees. You're not the hot spot, but you're right up there. <laughs> you're in the top five. I think the hot spot was 68. And uh, was that Pasadena? Uh, fantastic. Uh, Teresa McFarland's here. Hi, Teresa. How you doing? I think Teresa's from Waterloo, Ontario in Canada. I recognize my regulars. Um, if you're watching this channel and, and uh, you're new, uh, welcome. Uh, and if you'd like to type in where you're from and what your high temperature is going to be today, please let us know. If you just want to watch and see what's going on with me and my, my subscribers and, and my viewers who are interacting with me, welcome. I want to talk about travel. And today we're talking about the Trump shutdown. And um, we're, I'm worried about the, the sort of offshoot effects of what's going to happen. Um, the, the the story goes that airports won't be affected, theoretically. But what about the air traffic controllers? What about the, uh, if there's a union dispute between them and and, and their employer, uh, the the feds aren't around. What's going on with, um, well, you know, people come to the, to the United States from around the world. They land in, in the country. They have to go through customs. If you're a tourist, you're coming in on tourist uh, visa you know if you're from the uk you don't need a visa per se but if you're from another country you do and if you're coming to the united states with the, you know you just got a green card and congratulations for you on that you've got to go to the customs agent and show them the paperwork and that usually takes five ten minutes and sometimes you have to go to a second second secondary uh uh interview just to you know go over the paperwork and so on but uh what happens if uh, if uh we don't have uh, enough agents to handle the overflows and now the lineup in in customs is an extra half an hour extra hour to get in for those coming home uh from you know to america from overseas hey, you know, it's another hour before you get through the airport but if you're looking to catch a cruise <laughs> you're landing in miami and you're trying to get to fort lauderdale not even miami it's going to get 30 miles north to my to fort lauderdale to get your cruise that's leaving today and you thought you could fly in on the same day because the plane was going to land at 10 in the morning and, uh, you know, we got till four in the afternoon to make the plane. We should be all right. Theoretically, it works. But um, if we've got, you know, massive delays, uh, issues with paperwork, um, if the computer systems break down, what about all the support staff that the feds have regarding keeping those systems up and running? Um, the federal government shutdown runs across everything. And... Um, Sometimes, you know, one computer system shuts down in one department and it affects another and you get this chain effect. I, I'm just worried about the worst case scenario. So I'm saying to you out there, people, if you are going on a cruise on a, uh, let's say you're departing on a Saturday, fly in on the Friday and take all that last minute nonsense out of play because you cannot afford to miss your ship. Uh, once your ship goes, you're done for um, same thing on the way back. It, you get back to, to the port on a Saturday, let's say, same thing. You get in Saturday and, and you thought you'd get off the ship at uh, 8 or 9 or 10 in the morning. And uh, yeah, they're letting you off the ship on time, but you're stuck in that terminal building because you can't clear customs fast enough. And you have a flight that afternoon or, or around noontime or whatever it is. You got you you may have a problem. And uh, this is something I, I just mention it as a as a, you know, Fail safe, be careful out there. I don't know. Um, let's see. Elizabeth is here, 69 in Daytona. Elizabeth, I think you're edging out uh, Pasadena at 68 degrees today. Uh, <laughs> way to go. Uh, Pamela uh, saying, um, the shutdown is not, our pre is, is not on President Trump. It's on the very stubborn Democrats in the Senate that were trying to make our president look bad. Uh, I can't comment either way. I don't want to go political. Um, everyone is involved, and unfortunately, it's happened. And it's here, and hopefully it's a short thing, and we can just get back to normal. Is that possible? Uh, Charles is saying, uh, we've watched about 10 of your videos today. Like the information you give about the cruise lines. 
This is information that you don't hear that much about from other YouTubers. Oh, thanks, Charles. Uh, thank you very much. Um, you know, I I, uh, I pride myself on trying to do that kind of thing. I, um, I I have to admit, though, a lot of my ideas come from you guys. Um, I'll get answered questions from you know from viewers, and uh, that'll get me thinking. Going, yeah, geez, that's a really good question. I should look into that because I do watch other YouTubers. I have over the years watched other YouTubers, you know, who are talking about information on cruise ships and what's going on out there. And uh, you know, I see the same stuff all the time. It's the same topic. It's the same. You know, same thing over and over and over again. And, and when, when I go on a cruise, I, I'm kind of like an observer. I like to kind of watch what's what's going on and, and you know, who see who's doing what. And uh, I kind of make note of of different things and and think to myself, boy, that, there's there's something I could talk about. There's something I hadn't thought about that. I could talk about that. And so I like to bring up the sort of maybe it's a little more obscure uh, type stuff. Like the other day, I talked about the shareholder benefit program. You know, if you're a shareholder of a uh, of one of these cruise companies. You can get an extra discount. You get a room credit on every cruise you take, no matter what. Um, and uh, it, it, it's unlimited. You can take five cruises a year with Royal Caribbean. Say you take five one-week cruises with Royal Caribbean, and you're a shareholder of Royal Caribbean, you get a $100 room credit over and above any other offer they give you every time you take a cruise. Why? You're a part owner of the company. You own 100 shares. Royal Caribbean is rewarding you for being a shareholder of the company, and you're helping the company make more money. They'll get that hundred dollars somewhere else off you. You're gonna you're gonna lose it at the casino. You're gonna eat it at a special restaurant. You're gonna buy a drink. Something. There's something. There's got to be something. And so uh, these are shareholder benefits that uh, you know exist. And I, I I couldn't find a video on it. I I I didn't look you know really hard, but I did a quick peek. I couldn't find a quick video on the shareholder benefit program. And and it's been out there for years. So that's a that's a great deal. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, people are agreeing with uh, with uh, Charles on uh, how good my videos are. I hate to. <laughs> I, sh I really shouldn't read those comments. <laughs> That's what they're saying. And thank you, thank you all for that. I I so appreciate that, and it it motivates me to just keep on going. Uh, just keep right on going. Um, now today I'm going to just uh, apart from the shutdown thing. I think I've said enough. I think I've kind of covered it all. Unless if there's anything I've missed, you let me know. You kind of make a comment for me, folks. But I think on the shutdown thing, um, hopefully the airports won't be an issue. The ports won't be an issue um, because I'm I'm trying to remember if container ships are affected with this shutdown. I I don't know about that. Well, well, I will ask. I will add this. You've probably noticed I've been talking in the last week or so in a couple of videos about uh, ship inspections, uh, the CDC inspections. These are surprise inspections that happen once every six months unannounced mandatory for any cruise ship operating in the u.s waters so if you are a uh, hall in america and you're coming in with Amsterdam into port into a u.s port there could be cdc inspectors waiting for you to do a top to bottom inspection of your ship for hygiene and health reasons and it'll cover everything i don't know if the cdc is in business right now they might be down and what i worry about is uh, the CDC internally, they have a list schedule of the ships that they're going to inspect when they're going to inspect them. They know when the carnival breeze is coming in. They know when the Epic is, you know, which port and what port it's going to come in for the next year because the ships have registered uh, their cruises. They've reserved a pier time to be able to offload and onload passengers, goods, garbage, you name it. And so the CDC inspectors have a list internally when they're going to check out this ship and this ship and this ship and this ship. Well, this coming week, if this strike is on, if this shutdown goes this next whole week, CDC won't be conducting five days of inspections out of New Orleans, out of uh, Tampa, out of Miami, out of Fort Lauderdale, out of Port Canaveral, out of Richmond, out of uh, Baltimore, out of New York. You name the ports, L.A. Uh, there, there could be a couple of dozen cruise ships not inspected this week which means they've been backed up and under, uh, I don't want to say it's an official rule, but I'm just going to use that kind of lingo. Wouldn't surprise me if it goes too, too long and then everyone's back in business. The CDC is going to be an awful hurry to try to catch up because 335 cruise ships are out there in the waters and a high number of those visit U.S. ports because America is the number one cruising market on the planet. Uh, these ships have to be inspected, and if they go past their six-month date since the last inspection, they're not cleared. Now, what what happens now? Do you do you have to park the vessel until you get expect, inspected? Could that happen? Could the federal government literally say to to Royal Caribbean, 
that ship, you can't put passengers on it until we get an inspection done. And oh, by the way, we're three weeks behind. I, I don't know. Now, we haven't had a shutdown that's been really bad. The longest, I think, ever was 16 days. Uh, but at that time, there were 335 cruise ships. <laughs> but there are 335 cruise ships now. And there are 17 coming this year added to the total. So it's going to be just a ton. So I'm not sure how this is going to play out. We'll have to find out what uh, what this what this is going to be about. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, uh, Tony, Tony is here. Uh, uh, Tony is saying, I always fly in the day before a cruise. You're so right. Uh, Tony, welcome. Uh, in September, going on MSC Seaside, staying in Miami, uh, sweet herd. A lot of bad reviews so far on the Seaside. Yes, Tony, you were right. Uh, we've been talking about this all week on this uh, on these live chats. Uh, the Seaside is have, having teething problems. And um, we're hoping it's new ship teething problems and that they're really just temporary and they're minor things. Uh, but there have been some complaints and there have been some issues there. You're not sailing until, what do you, what do you say, September? I, I think you're safe. Um, I, I, if you're going next month, I'd be worried. But uh, going out eight months from now, I think you're going to be okay. Uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, Dylan is saying, I hope my flight's okay at the end of February. Uh, you know, Dylan, I think it'll be okay if this if this shutdown is only a week or two. Shouldn't be an issue. Uh, let's see what we got here. Kay Butler uh, is back. Hey, Kay, how's it, how's it going? Agree with Pamela, uh, but really appreciate Bruce not getting political. Not a proper form for that. Yeah, I, I, like I say, I'm, I'm, you know, I, uh, I find it entertaining, but I, I don't go any further. Um, there are other channels who love to do this. <laughs> uh, let's talk cruising. Uh, Teresa is saying MSC Seaside just needs to get the kinks out. I, I agree, uh, Teresa. Boy, I, I, and I hope they do. I'm sure they will. Uh, the company itself is massive. As I was saying earlier this week, for those of you who uh, were watching earlier this week, uh, MSC Seaside is a, a part of the MSC Cruise Company. Uh, they're owned by another corporation that is the largest container shipping company in the world. Uh, MSC is spending 14 billion bucks over the next seven, eight years on new ships. It's kind of like every six months. Another 4,000 passenger ship is coming from MSC. They've got 14 now. They're going to be um, as big as Norwegian. They're going to be uh, maybe bigger. Uh, they're going to be uh, bigger than Princess. They're going to be, uh, they have more ships than Cunard. Uh, they've got, uh, they need to get up to about 20 something to catch Carnival. And uh, seven more puts them at 21. I mean, that, that, this, is, this is massive. You're going to hear a lot about MSC. You're going to be bombarded by MSC advertising. Because they're going to be, uh, you know, advertising their their cruises to Americans and North Americans and people worldwide on the internet, through television, or you name it. Uh, they've got ships to fill every week like everyone else. And a 4,000 passenger ship with maybe, what would that be, 1,800 cabins, let's say, on an average? That's 1,800 cruises a week per new ship. <clears throat> so 1,800 times 52 weeks a year, and you can't take a week off with a cruise ship. Uh, only every fifth year do you go into dry dock and then it's only two to four weeks, six at the most. And they get that ship back out there because a ship that isn't in the water and isn't moving is losing money. A ship that's at the pier is costing money by the minute to sit there, get it emptied out of old passengers, get it filled with new passengers, <laughs> the, new, the new fresh passengers, passengers with fresh money get the garbage out from the old cruise, get all the stuff on for the new cruise and get out of that port ASAP because the U.S. Coast Guard, the Port Authority, the unions that run those piers uh, are charging that cruise line an absolute fortune for every hour that they're in there. And that's why cruise ships never overnight in Miami. Did you ever ever notice that, that there's a cruise from New Orleans to uh, the Caribbean and, and to New York, and we're going to stop in Miami for the night or two, and you can use the ho the ship as a hotel in Miami? No, there's none of that. <laughs> no way. The ship would lose millions, millions. They get into Miami or into Port Canaveral or any U.S. port, and as quick as humanly possible, get the heck out of there with a new load of passengers. It's the, on, the only reason that they're in that port is because it's America. If Americans would be polite enough to fly to, a, say, a smaller country like uh, Barbados, uh, the cruise companies could make deals with the Barbadian, uh, Barbados government, Barbadian government, and, uh, and use that as their home port. And have you guys fly all the way down to Barbados and then get on and get off the ship and off you go. And they'd pay way less in port charges. But that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Americans are saying, "You bring that ship to my uh, to my country, 
and I'm getting on. Let's go for a ride. So uh, it's the business, and uh, um, it's an amazing thing, this turnaround. It's a logistical um, a miracle, uh, like airplanes. Uh, you know, uh, Southwest Airlines and American and Delta and United, you notice that airplanes don't sit at the gate for any seconds longer than they actually have to. We as passengers think, this is taking forever. <laughs> well, no, not really. That plane came in. They got those passengers out. While they're walking off, the bags are coming out, the fuel is going in, the sewage is coming out, fresh water is going in, the, the old pop cans are going out one side, the new new pop and cola and drinks are going in on the other side, and then the new passengers are coming in, and we're ready to go, we're ready to go, we're ready to go, and it's incredible. In one hour or hour and a half, that plane is turned around back in the sky, making money again, because once an airplane gets off the ground, it makes money. Once the airplane's on the ground, it costs money. So uh, same thing with cruise ships. It's, it's amazing. MSC Seaside, great stuff. Um, Troy, uh, you're watching from Washington State. Fantastic. I'm in. Uh, I'm just north of Idaho in British Columbia, so you're my you're my neighbor. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's see. I hope they got the kinks out in uh, Teresa. Uh, Teresa, saying I'm sailing on it uh, in November. Yeah, the uh, the Seaside, uh, Teresa. I hope for you also. Uh, November, I'm sure you'll be fine uh, on the MSC Seaside. Kay Butler says, yes, I hope MSC is, is better. Saw the videos of exploding toilets, sewer smell, sickness, and sinks leaking into the floors. I feel so bad for those passengers. And, you know, when one thing happens, the other thing happens, the other thing happens, right? People will get sick. And if you got toilets backing up and now you get that bacteria all over the place, uh, it's going to spread. And uh, it's just a nightmare. And, and being on a, in a closed container like a cruise ship, not, not a good thing, right? So yeah, you really you really feel for those folks who are on that cruise. Uh, they were you know all excited about being on sort of an inaugural thing. It turned out to be an inaugural nightmare. <laughs> so oh man, cross your fingers. Uh, Charles, uh, uh, thumbs up to you, K Butler. And then uh, K Butler says, I understand problems about how they handle them. Uh, makes all the difference. I hope they gave the passengers some sort of compensation. I, you know, I I don't know if they ever did. Um, uh, some cruise lines are very good about that kind of thing. They're they're actually proactive about it. They'll they'll uh, you know, PR is everything, and they just don't want PR that, that you know bad PR. And uh, um, but the thing, sometimes you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. If you don't give compensation, some people complain about it; it goes away. If you do give compensation, it makes the news. You know, it, it, it gets it gets promoted. But then what happens is, uh, let's say you're you're giving twenty five percent of your cruise refund, or you're giving twenty five percent off a future cruise, right? You get people going, oh, is that all they're giving, those cheap buggers? <laughs> so now you get people complaining about the deal that was offered out of the goodness of the corporate heart. It's not good enough. So, uh, yeah, it's damned if you do. It's a delicate high wire act. Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, Teresa's saying uh, MSC is smart. Uh, they're pricing really low for the new ship to get people on up. Uh, yes, Teresa, they are pricing really low uh, right now. Um, I'm going to say the seaside, uh, probably the best value right now, um, apart from the problems they've had. I'm wondering, say, even a month from now, maybe even next week, there won't be these problems. If you can get a, a, a balcony cruise in the Caribbean on the MSC seaside, and I know there are deals now for like April, which is what, two and a half months from now, um, you can get a balcony on the sea seaside for 600, 650 bucks a person. Wonderful deal. Now, I had a, a comment earlier this week, and it might be from one of my existing comment uh, followers. If you're if you know if you know what I'm talking about, send me a message. But the story goes that the MSC Seaside was um, uh, matching promotions from I think it was Royal Caribbean. If you were like a a frequent uh, frequent guest of of Royal Caribbean, you got you know you become part of the club. I'm, I'm not sure if it's a Presidents Club or what they call it. And the more brownie points you got, the more perks you got. And the MSC people. We're saying to these folks, if you're part of this program, let us know. We'll give you those perks on our ship just to get you to come on board and try us out. Now, that's that's aggressive marketing, really aggressive marketing. Uh, the pricing is aggressive marketing, absolutely. Uh, but uh, get the kinks out of that ship and get a few videos on YouTube that say, I was on that ship, had a wonderful time. Uh, the restaurants were great. My room was great. Uh, nothing was wrong. Everybody had a good time. I talked to other passengers and we all enjoyed it. You get a couple of videos like that on YouTube and MSC will be filling up those ships big time in a hurry. And this brings me back to the offer that I have made to MSC. As you you regulars, you know this. And uh, some of you folks are encouraging me to keep mentioning it. Hey, MSC, I'm here. Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. I would love to go on your ship. I'll take the chance to go into a balcony suite for a week with my wife. Of course, it's on the house. 
um, and I'll do YouTube videos right from the ship itself to all of my followers and let them know what's going on. And hey, if the ship is all working in perfect order, these are going to be great videos, don't you think? And it'll just be great PR for everybody. You guys just let me know. Uh, you know, Send me a comment down below later today and, and, and we'll make a deal. I haven't heard anything yet, but the offer still stands. What a great guy I am. Uh, <laughs> Troy is saying, yes, they are. That's why I switched my cruise from Royal Caribbean for cost. Troy, you're, it worked with you. They got you to switch out of one line and try MSC instead. Why not? Uh, that's a heck of a deal. Uh, Charles, uh, Bruce, uh, have you heard of any cruise port charges uh, or changes? Cruise, I've heard of any cruise ship port changes in the near future. Cruise ship port changes. Um, it's a tongue twister. I have been reading in the last week that Norwegian and Carnival have been announcing ships, uh, sort of like like a musical chairs kind of a game. Um, uh, and in both cases, it's because both lines are adding new ships to the fleet later this year. In the case of Norwegian, they're adding the uh, brand new ship called the Bliss, which is 4,200 passengers, uh, something like that. It's the it's the ship with the electronic go-kart racetrack on the top deck at the back, a two-layer, 1,000-foot-long uh, go-kart track with electrically powered go-karts uh, on top of the Bliss and a huge water park and a huge rope rope uh, obstacle type course park and laser tag and tons of events that ship is launching uh in a couple of months it's heading to seattle first to do alaska cruises and then next winter uh, uh november december it's heading to new york and it's going to be based out of new york for a few months which means that the getaway which was the norwegian ship that got caught in the um in the uh, bomb cyclone it will be uh shuffled uh elsewhere it might be coming out of miami now and so Norwegian is sh sh shipping, sh shuffling the deck with its ships uh, to various ports. Uh, if that's the question you're asking, that's the answer I'm giving. <laughs> Car Carnival's doing the same thing. They're moving about five or six ships around as well, and they're shifting home ports with them. And I think in, in one of my last couple of videos, I was talking about that, if you, if you check it out. Um, let me just see here. Uh, Kay Butler, good to hear, Troy. Let's let us know how your cruise goes. So Kay Butler wants to know how you're doing, Troy, on that, uh, on that seaside cruise. Uh, Pamela is saying, sorry about the politics, just wasn't in agreement with the term Trump shutdown. Oh, I hear you. U.S. government shutdown will be better. I uh, still like the info, Bruce, and we'll continue to watch your videos. <laughs> Thanks, Pamela. You're, you're great. Uh, yeah, they called the Schumer shutdown. <laughs> they called it the uh, McConnell shutdown. Not many are calling it the McConnell shutdown. But, oh, anyway, it's it's just, it's a show. It, it's a show. Uh, Teresa, uh, plus they match your status from any ship. Now, this is back to MSC. Teresa's talking about this MSC promo that I think I think is going on. I think if you are trying to book a cruise with MSC Cruises and you're you're doing, say, online um, or through a travel agent, and you might need to do this through a human being, a travel agent, or you call MSC Direct. I don't, I don't know if you can, but you could try. Uh, if you're a member of another cruise line's frequent cruiser program, they may well be offering you a deal uh, to come on over and give them a try, especially if it's the first time with MSC. So look into that. But keep in mind, folks, if you see a deal on vacationstogo.com or some of these other websites that are offering cheap cruises, and you see an MSC deal that's like uh, you know $620 for a balcony, and then you're talking to MSC directly, and they're quoting you $775 for the same cruise, same room, and then they're going to give you $120 off because you're a frequent cruiser, that's not even as good as the deal you saw online. So be careful that you don't you know get too eager on that. Be Do your homework. And know your numbers before you check with them. I would, in other words, check with them last. <laughs> check everywhere else first. Check with them last, and then check with the, with your own travel agent because your own travel agent can can do both for you. They can look up. They can say, "Oh, I see it on cruise. I see a, a vacations to go .com. They're offering you a, a deal for six hundred and whatever bucks, but that's only a category so and so balcony room. I can get you a balcony room that's twenty bucks more because you're a member of the so and so, but it's a higher grade balcony room. It comes with this, this, and this." Then let the travel agent be your your uh, you know your guide and 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 get you through. So that's something to uh, to think about. Um, uh, let me see here. Troy saying I will for sure let anyone know that I have not seen uh, uh, I have not seen a video of one of the Miami Suite cabin rooms yet. Yeah, we yeah that's right, uh, Troy. That's right. You you haven't yet had the pleasure and the comfort of watching a YouTuber. That, that's me. 
uh, go on a MSCC side and do live broadcasts and, and do reports back to his followers. That's you guys. Uh, to give you the assurance that all is well. That, that's why I, I put myself out there. You can see how I give. I just give. It's 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 part of my nature. What what can I say? Um, so let's see what happens. Kay Butler, 69 here in Orlando. You dog. <laughs> Way to go. Uh, Gailey says, I found a carnival. I found on carnival excursions, one that will take you for a tour to the Everglades. And then on to uh, Fort Lauderdale Airport or Miami Airport after you disembark. Now, that is interesting. Uh, you know, you get off the ship and get right on to a uh, departure day excursion. And they get taken to the Everglades. And then you end up at the airport because they know your flight. They know your flight number. They know the flight departure time. They know what time they got to get you there. If they can get you off the pier with your bags and the group of 10 or 20 or whatever others. And off you go and head for the Everglades for the day. And you've got an afternoon flight uh, and they get you there in time. Wow. Especially, I mean, this makes a lot of sense. If if you do have a flight that leaves at four o'clock in the afternoon or seven o'clock tonight um, and the, you know, the cruise ends, you know, that morning, what are you going to do with yourself for four or five hours and all that luggage? Uh, do you rent a car and schlep it around? Do you, do you take a cab and, and where do you go? Do you just go to the airport and sit there like a lump all day? Here's an idea. This is smart. Uh, from Carnival. They, they can put a few of these kinds of uh, uh, itineraries together where they can grab the passengers right off the ship on disembar disembarkation day, take them off the ship in one unit, you clear your customs, you get your bags, you go to the uh, the media meetup area with your, your, your rep from Carnival, and you're on that excursion, and now you're going to kill four, five, six hours, maybe includes lunch, and uh, you, end up at the, you end up with a ride to the airport, you know, three, four hours before your flight time. Wow, I mean that. I haven't. I've never heard of that before. Um, maybe some of you else have, have any of you heard of that? I've never heard of that before. I think that's brilliant. Um, let's see here, uh, Troy. Uh, also, just pur purchased my airline tickets this week uh, out of Seattle to Miami for two hundred and ninety-six dollars. There might be a shutdown going on right now, but is America a great country or what? Two hundred and ninety-six dollars diagonally. From up there, all the way down there, I'm assuming it's return. I, I don't think it's a one-way flight. Wow, uh, that that's that's awesome. Now uh, here in Canada, <laughs> I have one Canadian watching. I know I've got one Canadian out of Waterloo watching. Uh, Teresa, I think that's you, Teresa. Uh, airfare in Canada is, is nothing like that. Uh, no, 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 no. We have two airlines. We have two national airlines and a few regional airlines, and the regions will shall never overlap. And uh, boy, do we pay dearly. Uh, we pay dearly. And the uh, sweet government of Canada that we have sometimes really doesn't allow foreign competition into this country on the airline front because we don't want to hurt our national airlines, of which we have two who just stick it to us. And so we pay dearly. There are Canadians, and I'm one of them. We will drive across the border into the United States and get on an airplane there. True. We'll pay to park the car in America to fly out of America uh, because the amount of money we save per person, like a family of four, and you're saving 180 bucks a person for a family of four, that's a cruise. That, that's a cruise. This is the kind of stuff we're talking about. It's unbelievable. Anyway, um, Teresa's saying, wow, that's cheap, Troy. <laughs> you got that right. I know Teresa's going to say that. Um, Angela's asking, what airline? Uh, Kay Butler's saying, I hope MSC takes you, it takes you up on it, Bruce. Uh, also, it would be cool if you hosted the Traveling with Bruce group cruise. Yes, we should do a meetup cruise. And uh, just let me get to 1,000 subscribers. Let me get maybe to a couple of thousand subscribers. Let me grow this channel so that it actually pays me to do this uh, so that I can afford to spend more money and go on a cruise with you guys because that would be fantastic. I, I, wouldn't that be great maybe this fall uh, that we do a meetup cruise? And uh, we, we book that together and, and away we go. And then we'll book a, I'll book a room on the ship for a speaking engagement uh, to, to do a meet and greet. Um, I'll even talk to, uh, heck, I would be happy to talk to MSC Cruises about being a cruise speaker. And uh, we'll, I'll do two or three chats during a seven-day cruise about uh, being a, Uber and, a YouTuber and talking about cruising. That would be awesome stuff. So, uh, yes, okay, Kay Butler. Don't think that hasn't crossed my mind. Uh, oh, yeah, it's yeah, it's in there. 
Uh, Troy, uh, Troy saying Flu United. That's really a great. That's a great, uh, great airline. Great, uh, great fare. Uh, on Orbitz, way to go. Uh, Orbitz is great for finding good, good uh, air deals. Uh, Angela A says I lived in Florida and need to go to Seattle. I will check it out. There you go. Uh, I also would recommend Angela check out JetBlue, um, but I don't think you'll get a direct. I don't think so. But JetBlue can might be able to give you a connection through. Vegas or through LA, Miami, LA up. But anyway, yeah, that's that's a great fair. Uh, of course, um, uh, United and I think American does directs. Uh, Teresa, uh, sailing the Bliss in February 2019. Okay, Teresa, the Bliss in February. You're going to be okay on the uh, new cruise ship teething issue issue. Yeah, I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> so yeah, should be great. Um, now tell me, uh, Teresa, tell us where are you sailing from? Is it a, like a, is it, um, uh, departure out of Miami? Cause I think out of after New York, they're going to bring the ship South. I, I, I don't remember exactly. Um, you can let us know. Uh, Troy is saying, uh, uh, Troy is saying great. I hope you get a great rate as well. Angela on your airfare. Uh, then Troy went on to say, yes, MSC did match my status with Royal Caribbean. There you go. That's it. There's another one. Uh, this is what's happening. Uh, Charles, um, all the cruise lines have different degrees of membership levels. Which cruise line has the best point system? I'd love to hear this from you guys. Uh, I want to check into that myself, but it's going to take me a few days to kind of dig through all that info. If any of you know or, or can share with us some of the some of the perks, let us know. I know there are credit card companies, you know, where you can get a credit card with the Royal Caribbean logo on it or a credit card with the Norwegian logo on it. And every time you spend money, you get Instead of getting cash back, you get bonus points towards cruising or credits and that type of thing. Be kind of curious to know how that works. There's just all kinds of uh, ways to, to take advantage of these deals. Uh, Trina, Teresa is saying uh, um, uh, Norwegian offers the best perks I find for status. Interesting. Uh, thumbs up from Charles. Angela, uh, <laughs> LOL, you're funny, Bruce. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Teresa, my, my wife laughs at me all the time, um, but I don't know if it's sincere. Uh, she just she just laughs at me all the time. Mind you, you know, happy wife, happy life. I keep her laughing, and uh, it's all good. Teresa, it uh, costs more to fly anywhere in Canada than it does in the U.S. To fly out of the U.S. is cheaper. You got it. That's right. Uh, Angela A., I was just on Royal Caribbean, and they were offering, if you took an excursion to go around Tampa, they would take your bags to the airport for you. And you can enjoy the excursion. Uh, yeah, you know this is this is brilliant. I, I think this is absolutely a wonderful idea. Um, you know, there's places you can go all around Tampa to be quote to be taken to all around Tampa. Same with Miami, Fort Lauderdale. I mean, wow. You know, it's not like these ships come back to port to a you know to a city of two thousand people and there's nothing to do. <laughs> these are big towns, lots going on, museums and theme parks and gardens and tours and what have you fan just fantastic um let's see here uh, uh let's see here we go paul uh, pamela jordan i'm just catching up with my uh, my notes forgive me folks we are booked pamela says we are booked on the oasis in december of this year that's royal caribbean um uh, it's so far away uh december i can't wait to see the decorations on the ship oh christmas time first time for a near holiday cruise yeah that, that they'll have it all decked up with christmas decorations the trees. I've seen a few uh, YouTube videos over the years where people are cruising at you know at that uh, that time of the year. Yeah, it's wonderful, wonderful. Uh, yeah, you'll love it. Teresa, uh, Teresa saying Miami. Okay, so um, you're you're on the Bliss and you're heading out of Miami. Gotcha. So you're doing a Caribbean cruise. Uh, you're gonna have a great time, and I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, Matt, good evening, Bruce. Uh, that or that's goodbye or hi. Uh, and Matt, uh, if you're just joining us. Where are you? Um, I I know I, you're a regular. I know you were here before, but at the moment I'm, it escapes me where you're from. Uh, but welcome. If you're leaving, goodbye. But if you're if you're here, hi. <laughs> Hello, goodbye. Hello, goodbye. Yeah, these uh, these uh, new cruise ships that are coming out, uh, you know, moving into different port cities to to set up their you know to set up their their home ports. The Bliss will make Miami its home port. Uh, Manchester, UK. It is evening in Manchester. Hi, Matt. Uh, great to see you again. Uh, Manchester, second largest city in the United Kingdom, if I got my geography right. Um, and uh, you're a repeat offender. You're back. Thank you. <laughs> it's great to have you. Uh, yeah, the um, the uh, the Bliss will be an interesting ship for Norwegian. We're going to hear just all kinds and see all kinds of, um, of press on the Bliss because uh, 
they're going to bring it over from Europe after it, it launches. I think it's in a couple of months, and I, I'm sure it hits New York first, and then um, it'll go all the way through the Panama Canal and end up in Seattle. And in every new, every port that it gets to for the very first time, balloons, fireworks, entertainment, laser shows, you know, local celebrities, uh, all kinds of stuff, and uh, and then it'll end up in Seattle, and it'll start its uh, it, its uh, touring of the uh, Alaska run for the summer. And it should be a lot of fun, and it should be a great deal. Uh, I'm hopeful, uh, we all are, that the first, say, month or two, the bliss, whatever teething issues it has are minor and few and far between. And then, uh, you know, uh, through the summer and into the fall, all is normal and away we go. And it should be a pretty pretty cool deal. You know, I, as I've said before, and, and, and for those of you who have, have not cruised before, uh, again, this, I'm directing these comments to folks who are, may not be watching me at this second live, but for you who are watching me on the video, see, you know, tonight or a week from now or a year from now, if you're new to cruising and you've just come across this channel, I talk to my viewers all the time through these live casts and uh, I encourage the back and forth. Um, but if you're a new cruiser, um, the, the thing about Norwegian is that they invented what's called freestyle cruising. Uh, and it's a freestyle dining is another term that they like to talk about. This is where you can eat where you want, whatever time you want. And um, it, up until 10 years ago uh, and before, it was pretty pretty strict uh, on cruise ships. Uh, they were not logistically set up to just feed you whenever you felt like you wanted to eat something necessarily. Uh, they would have, of course, a, a buffet area or they would have maybe a snack area. But the so-called dining room was the star of the show. And you would have your lunch and dinner there, maybe even breakfast. And uh, the dining room was, was, was set up for times. And uh, 20, 25 years ago, cruise ships could not handle all the passengers at the same time for dinner. So the dining room might hold 700 people, which is huge, I mean, it's big. But uh, the cruise might have 1,400 people on it. So you would have an early dining time seating and a late dinner seating. Uh, and that was strictly... Uh, adhered to by the passengers and, and the staff. Your maitre d', if you came in late, now the maitre d' had to scramble to figure out a way to feed you, to get you get you a table, because they had the early seating, late seating, and that, that was it. There were no other seatings. Um, uh, so that's how it used to be. Now, with Norwegian, they came up with this anytime dining deal. Hey, we've got all these specialty restaurants, so we got the main dining room. Yeah, that'll hold seven, 800 people. No problem, go there. But you don't have to have a seating time. If you want a seating time, We'll give you a seating time, sure. But if you don't want a seating time and just show up, chances are we've got room for you. You can come on in. But at the same time, we have 12 other restaurants all over the ship, from a steakhouse to a Chinese-type uh, restaurant to a, to a sushi place to a pizza-on-demand spot. we got all these various types of restaurants. You can go in there anytime you want. And for a small nominal fee, remember, the fo remember those folks? The nominal $5, $10 charge for a specialty restaurant? <laughs> used to be able to have the Italian for 10 bucks a person. Now it's 20, 25. Uh, now they have the, uh, you know, they have the uh, Guy Ferrari restaurants on uh, Carnival. I think they charge extra for that, unless I'm mistaken. Uh, they have celebrity chef type restaurants on other lines, more than 50 bucks uh, because it's six, six courses, you know, it's really fancy and you got to pay more. Profits, profits, profits. So things have shifted on the on the cruise ship uh, uh, food area. This is for your newbies out there who are watching. Those of you who are watching me all the time, you, you know what we're talking about. Uh, what do we got here? Um, Matt saying hi from Manchester. I just up to date on my, uh, on my connections. So food on cruise ships, big deal. Always has been, always will be. It'll be interesting to see what the food's going to be like on the Bliss. I'm quite looking forward to seeing the reviews from people who are going to be sailing on the Bliss and see what that's like and whether they enjoy it or not. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. And, of course, the other ships that are coming, uh, the uh, Carnival uh, Horizon that's coming out. Uh, and we've got the Symphony of the Seas, which is going to be the world's largest cruise ship on Royal Caribbean. It'll be a sister ship to the Oasis of the Seas, the Allure of the Seas, uh, the Harmony of the Seas. Uh, so the Symphony of the Seas will be the new one, and I think it's going to be... 50, 200 passengers, but 100 more than the last one, something like that. They always find a way to add another 100 people onto these ships, which makes them tighter and tighter and tighter with more rooms and cabins. But uh, we'll see. Uh, Two-story two suites are going to be offered on the Symphony of the Seas. Uh, 40000 a week will be the rate for, the, uh, for that room, two stories. Uh, but it'll have a slide from the second floor down to the first floor for the kids. 
mom and dad too, if you want to take a chance of getting in there. Um, uh, Gailey saying, true, Bruce, I forgot about that. Uh, on the Jade, we went uh, any time to eat and we booked a time when we met up with some of our new friends we made. It was great. Yeah, uh, you know, some, of the, some of the specialty restaurants, <clears throat> some of these are smaller in size in that they don't hold 700 people. You might go into the, uh, say, the Japanese, uh, you know, the Japanese restaurant where they got the guys with the spatulas and the knives and they're performing for you. You sit in a circle. He's in the middle. There's usually a male. The male chef's in the middle and there's about room for 10 around him and he's flipping the food around and entertaining you, all that sort of stuff. They might have eight or 10 of those food stations in that restaurant. So they can only hold 80 to 100 uh, people at a time for a dinner. And the dinner is going to be about an hour because it's a bit of a performance rather than, you know, order your meal, sit, wait, talk, chat, have a drink, and then the waiter brings you your meal from the kitchen. Here, he's preparing it fresh in front of your eyes. So if 300 people want to have dinner at 7 o'clock on any time dining <laughs> and only 100 spots, you better make reservations. So Nor Norwegian Cruise Lines, uh, uh, Royal Caribbean, Princess, um, all of them. I mean, all of all America. Anyone that has specialty restaurants, they encourage you as a passenger uh, on your first day uh, or even before you get to the ship, but generally on your first day or second day, contact these specialty restaurants or walk to the maitre d' at the front of the restaurants and work out reservations for the, for the entire cruise. So if you're figuring, uh, well, on the last night of the cruise, we're going to do the steakhouse. Well, reserve your table at a set time on that date for that restaurant. And if on the second last night you're doing the dining room uh, and you don't need a reservation for that, you might take your chances and just go with that. Uh, or the third last night, oh, we're going to do the sushi restaurant. Well, you may have to reserve because there might only be spots for 50 people. And keep that in mind, especially on ships with 4,000 passengers. This is one of the things I didn't care for when I was on the Norwegian Epic. And that ship is kind of the size of the Bliss. It's sort of a 4,000 passenger, give or take, ship. Big, lots of levels, lots of events, activities. I mean, it's, there's lots going on. Problem is, you want to uh, see the show? You want to see a comedy show? You want to eat at a certain restaurant? You got to make reservations. And I, I'm on a cruise to get away from structure, to get away from, I must get up and go to work. I must get up and say hi to my YouTube listeners. I love saying hi to my YouTube listeners. I must get up and do this. I must get up and do that. When I go on a cruise, I want to just sleep until I get up. I, I want to go to the buffet and munch on whatever I want to munch on for breakfast, which is why I don't go to the sit-down restaurant, because I don't know what I want. And when I get there, it'll hit me. I'll see what I want when I get there. And I might find that, you know, I'm just going to eat a little this, little that, and I'm going to go for the spa. And then I'm going to come back to the room and hang out on the balcony for a while. I decided I want to go for a walk on the promenade for an hour and get some exercise. This is what I love about a cruise. No schedule, no rules, no structure. But if I have to now book specific things on the cruise with military precision, I don't have a watch. On the cruise, I don't want to have a what? I don't want to have my ID with me. I don't want to have anything with me. I just want to be wearing my flops, my trunks, a shirt, a hat, some sunscreen, and I'm just schlepping with my sport drink cup and my two caffeine-free diet cokes that you know, folks, you folks know I drink. Uh, so if I have you know structure, that that's a problem. Now, if I'm going to get a massage. That's a pleasurable thing I want to do. Yes, I have to book a massage, of course, but I don't get massages on cruise ships because of the dollars. And with the spa right there, once I'm in the steam room and in the jacuzzi, what do I need a massage for? I'm all loosened up anyway. So anyway, that's the thing about these cruise ships and these specialty restaurants and these specialty events and their size. Royal Caribbean, very, you know, you're going to have to make reservations for a lot of stuff. And so just keep that in mind when you're thinking of going on a cruise, I hope folks out there, if you do go on your first cruise, that it's a pleasurable experience. But if it isn't because you had to do this at this certain time and that at that certain time, or you know, you bought a drink package thinking you could drink the drinks for the drink and you didn't, and it it's costing you a fortune, and you should have bought you know bought the drinks one at a time. 
And after the cruise, you're going, oh, geez, cruising is for losers. I hate this. I didn't like it. It might be that you just picked the wrong cruise line or the wrong cruise ship within the cruise line. Got to ask yourself, what kind of a cruise do you want? What is the ideal vacation you're looking for? If last year you went to Mexico and you hung out at a resort for a week or 10 days and you did nothing but stay in the lounger by the pool, got worked on your tan and uh, enjoyed the, the, the complimentary drinks and ate when you wanted to eat and dumped yourself into the pool, went to the beach, you did nothing. You just relaxed, relaxed. If you want to do the same kind of thing, you can do that on a cruise ship. You can be just as relaxed on a cruise ship. But if you go on the wrong cruise ship, you're going to be in the middle of mayhem. For example, spring break on a uh, on a carnival cruise that's a five-day cruise to um, Cozumel. That, that's, a, that's a booze cruise. Uh, that's out of control, party central. And if you want a peace and quiet – you are going to be sadly mistaken. You got a great deal on the cruise, but you, you didn't get a good, great cruise for what you wanted. So again, if you want action, there are cruises for that. If you want serenity and, and relaxation, there's cruise and cruise ships for that. Keep that in mind and, and keep your eye open for that. That's just my little spiel on all of that. Hope I didn't bore anyone too much about this. Uh, just got to get back in my notes to catch up with everybody because I've been talking for so long. Um, I don't like what they've done. Uh, Matt saying, I don't like what they've done with the symphony deck plans. And uh, Matt, I'd be curious to know what you mean by that. Uh, or, 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 I'm sorry, you're saying they took away a complimentary mini bites eatery from the sports deck, which was really convenient for a quick snack. Oh, that's that's interesting. Uh, then they replaced it with a specialty restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Su surprise, eh, Matt? Uh, I, we're not surprised to, to hear that. Uh, I'm sure all of my followers. We're not surprised to hear this. Uh, take away a freebie and change it into a specialty. This is the trend. This is what's happening. And it, it, it starts to, uh, there will be a point in time where cruisers will go enough, enough already. This is, uh, you know, uh, I, I, those of us who've been around a while and, and that you can tell because of the lack of the hair and what's left is white. Those of us who've been around a while, we used to get it all for free, complimentary, included, all inclusive. Okay. Those were the days of cruising where you paid more up front and you got it all and you didn't have to worry about the little nitpicking stuff. Now it's like the airline business. You got your airfare, you got your first bag, you got your second bag, you got your carry-on fee, soon to have other fees. With cruising, we are now coming into this age of additional add-ons and certain lines are going to really go after it. Some lines may not. And that might shift us over time to our spots but for the newbies out there for you folks who are you know new to the cruising game uh, you're overwhelmed i know you're overwhelmed i was 10 years ago when i got into the cruising game i thought wow look at all the selection of rooms and all the things you can do on the ship and you know you can do all this extra stuff and you know my parents never talked about onshore excursions to this or that when they went on their Hawaiian cruise, they just went to the beach off the ship for a few hours and came back, you know, now, oh my God, you got all these excursions, snorkeling tours, fishing charters, scuba tour. I mean, it goes on and on and on. But um, on board the ship now, you've got the nickel and diming going on. Uh, I hear, I'm hearing talk now about charging for premium seats in the showroom. You want to see the Cirque du Soleil show or you want to see the, a Broadway show of cats or uh, Jersey boys or whatever's being presented, you got to pay extra for the better seats. Is that right? I, I thought it was first come first serve. It's a cruise after all. So yeah, we'll have to see Matt. You got a point there about that, uh, about that move. Teresa is saying on Nor uh, Norwegian, the bigger ships have three main dining rooms. So you never have to wait and dine right on. Um, uh, Teresa is saying, is that the only charge they did for the symphony from a change? Oh, Teresa wants to know if that's the only change they made on the symphony. Matt saying uh, they also removed Starbucks, the arcade, and Sabre from the boardwalk and replaced them with one massive American diner. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to guess, Matt, that they probably set up their own uh, barista. It might be like their own generic version of a barista. Uh, Matt says, I think they removed the IQ desk. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> they removed the IQ desk. Uh, Teresa saying <clears throat> Allure and Oasis are very similar. I thought Harmony and Symphony would be the same. 
Uh, Teresa saying it's good to know. Thank you. Uh, Matt, uh, they are very similar, just a couple of dining changes, really. But in my opinion, the Allura layout was much better. Uh, Teresa saying, been on all three of those ships. Absolutely love them. There you go. See, for Teresa, these ships work. And way to go. Fantastic. Matt, yes, he says. Uh, Teresa also says, uh, uh, <laughs> Dylan, Dylan saying, can I order more than one dish when traditional dining? And Teresa said, yes, you can, though. So as I say, sometimes I get I get a chance to answer the question. Other times my viewers are right on it, and I love it. This is what we're all about here. Uh, Teresa also says, I never eat in the specialty restaurants. And I agree with you, Bruce. They need to stop with all those extra pay restaurants. Yeah. You know, this is uh, this is uh, it's a toughie. Um, if you offer, uh, uh, you know, certain class of food, like certain ethnic type of food as a specialty restaurant, that might be the, the, the deal that just gets a family of cruisers or a bunch of cruisers on board that ship. It, it, that might have sold them. Uh, on the other hand, you know, one cruise line makes changes and another cruise line has to now ask, should we match this? Should we do the same thing? And they get into this war, uh, you know, you get into this variety war. And um, uh, the, the one cruise line I'm watching closely, I'm quite curious about is Viking, Viking uh, um, ocean cruises. The folks at Viking are famous for the river cruises in Europe. Uh, they got 60, 65 ships, I think it is in total, that they have going on river cruises, China and Europe. Now they've been launching ocean liners, but they're smaller. They're only 930 passengers and about 650 crew. Uh, on board, only balcony rooms, no inside rooms. And uh, there are no specialty restaurants. It's, it's all included, all inclusive. Back to what it used to be. And, uh, you know, you pay more on a per day basis. But you do the math and say, well, if we were going to do four specialty restaurants for two people over the cruises, you know, with someone else, uh, and then they had all those other features that we don't use that we're paying for because all those, you know, extra uh, activities, you know, the water slides, the cl rock climbing walls, uh, the pool diving demonstrations, you know, you're paying people to manage all that, uh, pr promote it, pr perform it, maintain it. It's all coming out of the cost of, you know, the cruisers on board the ship. Viking is saying, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go kind of old school. We'll go with a, a smaller ship. We'll up the quality. We'll make it five, five and a half stars. We'll do balcony suites only. We'll have no specialty restaurants that you pay extra for. It's all inclusive. Um, we'll have a drink package where you get alcohol and soft drinks with dinner. Um, if you want a premium Chevis Regal, you know, high-end scotch, or something, you'll pay extra for that. But, you know, regular drinks, maybe not. That's kind of old school. And uh, that has a niche. There is a segment of the population out there, a demographic segment, an age segment, uh, that, you know, a, a noise tolerant segment that will go that direction. And so uh, I can see Vikings surviving and surviving well. The trick of it is it's in the marketing. They've got to make sure that they market those cruises well enough in advance to enough people and not over discount them because you don't want to become like a, a discount cruise line, right? Um, so you got to kind of hold the line a little bit uh, to get people on board. Now, what, what cruise lines do do, um, and this is kind of working against me a bit, is if they've got 930, uh, room for 930 people in, say, 400, 450 suites, they've sold 350 suites and there's two months left to go or there's six weeks left to go, they may well start contacting travel agents directly, privately, and offering them a travel agency deal for this cruise. They want to get travel agents on these ships who then will get the royal tour and the royal treatment and the travel agent gets to take someone with them, their husbands, their wives, or their girlfriends, or their boyfriend. If you know a travel agent, get to know them well. Uh, maybe you can get on one of these trips and they'll get on a cruise for 200 bucks, 500 bucks, like super cheap. Get on that ship, get, get two dozen, uh, uh, two dozen travel agents on this ship on this week's cruise, two dozen on next week's two dozen. It's part of the marketing budget for the ship, for the cruise line. They then come back to their offices with their eyes lit up like this going, wow, was that a fantastic cruise? And guess what they're doing for the next month? They're getting on their telephone and on the computer to all of their regular clients, especially the clients they know will love this cruise, can afford this cruise. 
and will say, I was on that ship. That ship leaves Miami. It goes here. It goes here. It goes here. And you get this and you get this and you get this. And I was on it. Trust me, you're going to love this cruise. Mission accomplished for Viking because they've just got a whole bunch of people. Now, if Viking were forward thinking enough to also consider inviting a YouTube creator that does daily broadcasts and videos about cruising to say to him, you know, we really like the way you interact with your people and uh, talk about different cruise ships. We think that if you came on our ship for a week, you would really enjoy it. And then you could tell your YouTubers for months and months and months what it's like to be on a Viking cruise line. So I just put that out the idea out there. It just came off the top of my head. You regulars know what I'm all about. Anyway, so there you go. Um, <laughs> let's see what's up here. Teresa didn't like the extra costs. Uh, Teresa said, my mom did a Viking cruise and everything was included, even the excursions. Thank you, Teresa, for that comment. Uh, that is awesome. Uh, Matt, MSC having an interesting approach when they offer packages with certain things included instead of getting on the cruise and paying for the extra. Yeah, that's the marketing advance, uh, you know, advanced marketing before the cruise is even had. They're already pre doing this. Is a, I think it's a great move. I really do. It's the way of the future. Um, Ian is saying um, the only thing that I hated on the Hall of America cruise is that you had to pay for soft drinks. Yeah, yeah, you do. Uh, and that's where you do what I do. Uh, you put uh, two or three dozen cans in, in, keep them in the cases, those one dozen can cases, put them in your luggage, one in my wine bag, one in my wife's or two in mine, two in hers, bring on the cola yourself. And then you've got at least 36 of them. And uh, if you end up only having to buy 10 for the rest of the cruise, so be it. Uh, Teresa saying, Ian, that is on every cruise except Disney. There you go. Kay Butler saying, maybe you should become a travel agent, Bruce. No, 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 no. No, I'm not going to become a travel agent. Uh, I, I am my own travel agent, and I'm kind of like a rogue travel agent. I'd rather be, you know, I'd rather be kind of your travel agent, a travel agent advisor. I'd rather be just your advisor, and I, I'll just do this. I, I, I don't want to have to work in the office. I don't want to have to have quotas. I don't want to have to, a manager coming to me saying, Bruce, uh, you're supposed to market 20 cruises a week and you've only moved 12. Let's move some cruises, buddy. Otherwise, we've got to give your chair to somebody else. It's just not my stuff. I'd rather do this. It's much less, less pressure. Uh, Kay Butler, uh, yeah, they said that. Kay, Pamela, it's, it's, on, it's the same on a Royal Caribbean, Ian. Uh, same thing with soft drinks. Uh, Princess is very friendly to YouTube creators. They consider them press. There you go. And Princess is part of Carnival, which owns All in America. And they own Seaborn. And so Carnival, Princess, all you guys, all the cruise lines, I'm here for you. I, I'm here for you. And I would love to do this. Anyway, give me some more time, people. I've got to build my subscriber account. I have to show them, myself, YouTube, that I'm a bona fide YouTube creator with bona fide following of note, of size, and momentum. And uh, my hope is that uh, that I'll be uh, delivering 5,000 hours a month, 10,000 hours a month of programming power to the to the channel. And if I have three to five thousand to ten thousand subscribers, now we're talking. And uh, then then I can. That's when I'll get creative and say, okay, why don't we do an annual get together cruise for the followers of Traveling with Bruce? We'll pick a ship. We'll pick a line. And I'll get on the blower and talk to the marketing director of the line, whatever, or the, you know, whoever, Princess Cruise Line, this ship, or All in America, that ship, or MSC in this ship. And we'll find a cruise, and then we'll have a special deal for all of Bruce's followers, and we'll have a meet and greet for a week uh, on a cruise ship. That would be just so much fun. And if we can do it with five months, four or five months notice, that gives my worldwide followers a chance to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to find a way to get over there. Get on that ship and let's have some fun. So leave that with me, both. That could be that could be a lot of fun. Uh, so Matt, Matt says a subtle hint, Bruce. Uh, subtlety is, you know, it's a skill, you know. It's an acquired thing. Anyway, there you go. So I'll tell you, folks, that it, it, uh, there's a possibilities are endless on, on cruises, uh, you know, which way to go and how to do it. Uh, uh, ways to uh, to to make deals, uh, what what itineraries to pick, what ship you should go on. Uh, do you take a drink package? Don't you take a drink package? The specialty meals. I tell you, I remember on my last cruise, uh, on well, the last Princess cruise I was on, 
they were hounding us as passengers. You're walking along in the buffet area, and and right, you know, when you come in the buffet or even inside the buffet, they were standing around the little table, and you know, the two the two staff members are standing there, and I know what they were doing. They were told by management, hustle the drink packages. Hustle the drink packages. And if you see somebody who's walking along and they don't, you know, and, and they ask you what's going on, and you get them to take a drink package, sell, sell, sell. And they were trying to sell it for the first two days of the cruise. It was a seven day cruise. We had three stops. What do I need a drink package for? I'm going to be off the ship for three of the seven days. Beer is two bucks a beer on in Mexico uh, in a bottle. It's safe to drink beer in a bottle, I think, in Mexico. So I, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, I found that. And then I'm beginning to hear about specialty restaurant packages where you pay so much money to get a specialty restaurant pass, and that will allow you on a, a seven-day cruise two or three or four specialty restaurant meals at select restaurants. Still doesn't include the, include the real expensive ones. And then they have the premium specialty restaurant package deal. This is coming. This, this is going to become as common as uh, the extra charge we're paying now for other services uh, because with ships having upwards of 15 different restaurants on board or 17 or 20 and three quarters of them are extra charge restaurants, you know what they're going to do. The, the cruise ship is going to hustle you to buy a package before you're, you know, get to the pier. Then they're going to hustle you to book your meal times at these specialty restaurants because otherwise you're blowing your special deal. I mean, why would you pay so much money for your specialty cruise pass and not pre-book your meals at certain dates at certain times? Because if you did, if you don't, and you show up at the Chinese restaurant on day four at six o'clock, and they say we don't have any openings until seven o'clock, and you show them the pass you bought for whatever hundreds of dollars, and they go, "Well, oh, sorry, you, you're supposed to make a reservation." I'm asking myself, what is this coming to regarding the easygoing cruise? Um, I'd rather just go back to the old days. Just tell me what time you want me in the dining room. If it's a seven thirty dinner time. I'll show up at 7.30 with my wife and we'll go to the same table every night. We'll have our same waiter, same assistant waiter. They'll get to know what I like. He knows I like a, a, a Diet Coke with my meal. It'll be waiting for him. He was, you know, within two minutes, he'll be bringing it to me with a little piece of lime, please. And my wife loves to have a whatever. He'll ask her, did you want this drink? Said, yes, I do. And she, he'll take care of her. This specialty dining thing, if I'm going to be at seven different restaurants, on seven different nights, and the times vary because I couldn't get the same time every night, uh, and I miss a reservation, I've blown it with regard to my specialty food pass. I, I, I'm just, no, too much stress, too much pressure. I, I don't like this. So I, anyway, I'm that's just me ranting and raving as an old guy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Matt saying, I have to say on, on, on uh, Norwegian, you are generally offered a package, a uh, complimentary when you book your cruise. Uh, out of drink specialties, Wi-Fi, yes, and I was always I would always take the specialty. Uh, yeah, Matt, they'll sometimes offer you. There's five packages that they've got, and uh, some of the cruises they'll say uh, if you got an inside room, you can pick uh, one or two of them. If it's a, a ocean view room, maybe two. If it's a balcony, you can take up the three, and if it's a suite, you get all five, and that includes you know no tipping, uh, Wi-Fi for up to 250 minutes maybe, or, or maybe free Wi-Fi now. A specialty dining package for four restaurants, free drink package, uh, and whatever the other one is. Yeah, there's even room credits. You know, like we'll give you a $100 room credit as well. Uh, they'll give you all these packages. But um, it all comes back to how much did the cruise really cost you in the first place? Uh, how long is the cruise for? Um, if you're doing a repositioning cruise from, say, Tampa to Southampton on the Jade coming up, that's a uh, 14, 15-day cruise, something like that, 13-day. Uh, if you get the four specialty restaurant deal, well, that's four of the nine of, of the 13 nights covered at least. And you got nine nights left. Well, you know, you got the buffet and you got this dining room and you, you know, one night you might just have burgers and pizza out by the pool deck. You don't have to eat formal every night, but in the old days, you know, we, we were thinking, Ooh, this cruise is such a good deal. I'm going to eat my fare. <laughs> I'm going to eat. If I don't gain 10 pounds on this cruise, I'm doing something wrong. So people are doing it that way. Uh, Kay Butler saying, Viking is sounding better, would rather pay more up front and not be worried about constant upcharges during a vacation. I'll tell you, um, 
go back and take a look at what you paid for some of these discount cruises in the last year or so and figure out, gee, you know, I got the I got this much for the for the room. That's what I paid. I paid taxes and fees. Okay, fair enough. Then I paid the tips. That was so much. Uh, but you know, at the end of the cruise, my room charges uh, for all the extra stuff came in at 850 bucks. Well, what was that? Was that an excursion or two? Was that some casino play? Fair enough. Casino play is casino play. Uh, did I did I buy a drink package or did I did I pay extra for certain things? Now you look at the the Viking line and go, well, gee, this is included, this is included, this is included. And on my last cruise, I did use that. I did use that, and I did use that. Uh, if I get those included in my cruise, uh, and I've got an upgrade on the uh, on the quality of the uh, you know the ship as a whole, uh, fewer people, uh, balcony suites only, um, high um, high ratio between um, crew and passengers, service will be top notch. Maybe it's worth the extra money. Something to definitely look into. And again, depending on the kind of tolerance level you have. And what it is you're looking for? This is how you're going to have to uh, consider, you know, which cruise line you may want to, you may want to frequent, and which cruise line you don't. There is obviously a reason why uh, are these six star lines in business out there. I mean, we've got, uh, uh, you know, Carnival uh, and and uh, and uh, Norwegian, uh, you know, Norwegian owns uh, Region Seven Seas. Uh, Carnival owns um, Seaborn. Uh, you know, Seaborn. Uh, if you ever, if you ever watch the uh, the Monte Carlo, uh, the, uh, the Formula One race out of Monte Carlo in May of every year, there are there's a certain angle the camera has. It's usually at the beginning of the broadcast, they'll sort of do an aerial shot of the whole area that Monte Carlo is sitting in, and then you'll see all those yachts that are out in the bay, and then out in the harbor just outside the bay, and inevitably there's a cruise ship out there. Guess what that is? <laughs> That's a Seaborn cruise ship. That's a six-star cruise line. They tendered in uh, their passengers in the morning for the race. And so they stopped in Monte Carlo for the Formula, the Formula race, Formula F1, the F1 race. And you can buy a, a ticket package through Seaborn right in the grandstand with drinks, with food. You may well be in a private apartment uh, on a balcony. Uh, about four or five stories up, watching the, uh, the watching the cars go this way and then come around this way, and uh, you're in someone's private apartment that's been converted to a uh, hospitality suite for you know thousand bucks a person, fifteen hundred bucks a person for the whole day, and your yacht or your your cruise ship is just just out there in the harbor, and you're you're using your camera and you're taking pictures of that ship you're on, and then you're texting back at home and sending little pictures to your friends and your relatives the so-called relatives you love the most, you know, the ones you like to give it to them and say, yeah, I'm watching the Monte Carlo uh, a Formula One race right now from this private hospitality suite. And, oh, and here's a picture of me as a selfie. Uh, this is me. And right back here, uh, that's the, the ship I'm on, yeah, the six-star uh, six uh, ship I'm on. It's, it's wonderful. I have a private butler. I love it. I tell you, it, that's, the, that's the class. So, you know, there's a reason they're sold out all the time. Um, if you go to vacationstogo.com, you'll occasionally see sale prices for seaborn cruises. Yeah, all the way down to four or five hundred a night per person. <laughs> down to four or five hundred a night. So twenty eight hundred, thirty five hundred a week for a cruise. Uh, but you're getting what you pay for. You're get you're getting the good stuff. So if you can swing it, uh, yes. Um, you know, if you got a young couple. They're getting married, and uh, they want to go on a honeymoon. Uh, you could send them on a honeymoon cruise on Royal Caribbean, on Norwegian. You betcha. You sure could. But, you know, if, the, uh, if there's uh, 20 of you that are scheming and putting your heads together, and you're saying, you know, why don't we get the, give the kids a real honeymoon they'll never forget? Why don't we send them on a seaborne cruise that'll run like five grand or 4000 bucks? And let's put that together with 20, 25 of us. We'll each throw in a couple hundred dollars rather than getting them a steak knife set and send them on a holiday that uh, they'll talk about, uh, they'll never forget, with their own butler, balcony room, first class everything. They'll, they'll be blown away. No, that, that might be the way to go. But look, if the kids are into uh, zip writing and zip lining and they're into flow writing and they're in the rock climb, wall, rock wall climbing, 
put them on a Royal Caribbean and uh, send them on the Harmony of the Seas or the Symphony of the Seas. Let them go nuts. They'll have a great time. So nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's the way it's going. Today, folks, I think I'm going to wrap this up. I got to tell you, this was a fantastic uh, session today. I really appreciate you folks watching me all day today. I'm going to be on next week, Monday to Friday, 2 o'clock Eastern, uh, sorry, 5 o'clock Eastern time, uh, every day next week, Monday to Friday, talking about cruising and uh, cruise ship updates and you name it. Anything you guys want to talk about, let me know. Uh, bring it up and we'll talk. I want to say thank you for all of you folks who watched me the whole time. I want to thank you to anyone that's just been watching me kind of a few minutes here, a few minutes there, come and gone. And those of you out there who are watching this channel uh, down the road and you're watching this as a regular video, you've been watching Bruce here uh, with Traveling with Bruce uh, do a daily live uh, streaming telecast talking about cruise ship holidays, cruise lines, cruise ship, you name it. And uh, I like to do one six days a week. I take Sunday off because my vocals need a rest. And uh, I'll do my next live on uh, Monday at 5 o'clock Eastern uh, every day during the week. And if you want to join in, please do come on by or just watch my channel. If you know anyone that likes what I'm doing or would like this, tell them about my channel. And consider subscribing, getting them to subscribe to my channel. We're on a march. We're trying to reach 1,000 subscribers by February the 20th to uh, meet the new monetization eligibility requirements that YouTube has just announced a few days ago. And we're about a third of the way there and we're pushing our way to the, uh, to the magic 1000 mark and uh, we'll panic in the last week. <laughs> Thanks again for watching everybody. Uh, Gailey, take her easy. Uh, Teresa says, have a great day. Charles is saying, it's been a pleasure. See you, Charles, Teresa, Gailey, everyone else, Kay Butler, Matt, all you guys. Thanks for watching today. And we'll see you next time. This is Bruce saying goodbye from Creston, BC. Have a, uh, Pamela saying have a great weekend, Bruce. Love the videos, live chats. Kay Butler, see you all. Charles, give me a thumbs up. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is Bruce saying goodbye with Traveling with Bruce. <laughs>